Old Brown Eyes is the 15th episode of the fourth season of Full House. This is directed by Joel Swick. And as always, there will be spoilers from now as I go through the episode and share some thoughts. And I think this is a pretty solid episode with some really great moments. It starts off adorably with Joey and Danny showing Michelle how to skip and then Jessie comes downstairs and teaches her how to strut. It's a nice, fun way to start things off. We then have two parts of the narrative, one involving Michelle and one involving DJ and Danny. And I'll talk about the story with Michelle first because it takes up the least amount of time and then we'll get in with the main narrative. And the story with Michelle actually involves Becky's wedding ring because Jesse is needing to get it engraved and he asks Joey to take it to get engraved and Joey happens to leave it on the table in the living room and Michelle and Stephanie had previously been playing hot and cold, the game where you hide something and the person is either hotter or colder if they're getting closer or further away from it and Michelle thinks it would be really fun to hide the ring to play hot and cold and honestly there wouldn't have been a problem if Jesse hadn't found it because what happens is Michelle hides it in the cookie jar which for Michelle I think that's a pretty logical place to hide it and Joey realizes the ring is missing so he asks Michelle and to her credit she is willing to tell him where it is through the game of hot and cold and Joey lifts the lid on the cookie jar and the ring isn't there but we the viewer know why we know that Jesse had previously found it in the cookie jar and he decided to take it out, I guess, to teach Joey a lesson, to make Joey panic about where the ring is, and obviously also to get it out of the cookie jar so it's away from the cookies. And Michelle had a brilliant line in this because Jesse finally confronts Joey and shows him the ring, and Joey asks, where did you find it? And Jesse says, in the cookie jar. And Michelle says, maybe next time you'll listen, which I thought was absolutely adorable because Michelle was being honest. She told him where it was, and it's not her fault that Jesse found it first. It's a nice part of the narrative and also a good lesson that you probably shouldn't leave valuables around not even just if there are kids in the house. You should just not leave them around anyway. The main narrative focuses on Danny and DJ. DJ is organising a fundraiser at the Smash Club for the newspaper to raise money for a new computer. And Joey and Jesse are both doing sets. Joey's doing comedy. Jesse is, of course, performing with the Rippers. And Danny feels a little bit left out. He is introducing the acts, but he's not exactly performing. And he, he thinks that DJ maybe just doesn't see him as cool enough. The next thing we know, he approaches the Rippers while they're performing, wearing a leather jacket, he has an earring in his ear. He looks very, I guess, stereotypically cool. And I just think he looks fabulous. I love the costume design. I think they did a really great job with it. And then Bob Saget gives this amazing performance of my generation, very high energy, really, really brilliantly done. Very entertaining for me as a viewer, Not so much for DJ, who happens to walk into the room at that point. And DJ says that she just can't go to this fundraiser because she'll be mortified. And Danny, to his credit, realises that DJ will feel this way and he goes to talk to her and tells her, don't worry, I'm not going to perform. And what I didn't expect with this is that DJ instantly felt guilty for making Danny feel bad. And she doesn't tell him this immediately, but... I kind of thought DJ DJ didn't need to feel guilty because, yes, parents will argue it's their right to embarrass their children, and I think that that is definitely often the case. But at the same time, Danny was a child once. We get to hear about how his father embarrassed him, and he should have really been aware of how DJ would feel. So I don't think she necessarily needed to feel bad. Yes, she had a bit of an outburst. She maybe didn't handle it as well as she could have done, But her not wanting Danny to perform like that, I feel like was an acceptable thought to have. So I don't actually think she needed to feel that guilty. But nevertheless, that is what she feels. And we then get to go to the fundraiser. We see the Rippers performing. Kimmy is having a great time. And then Danny invites DJ on stage at the end to say thank you for organizing the fundraiser. She reveals they raised enough money. Everybody's having a great time. I love her outfit. I love her dress. And then she says, we'll have one last song from Jesse and the Rippers with Danny. And Danny's face was was quite something. 
And I love what Danny did here because instead of launching into what would have been an embarrassing performance for DJ, he gave a really beautiful rendition of My Girl. And he may not have looked cool, but it was sentimental, it was meaningful, and it was beautiful. And I thought the performance was fabulous. And, and that's how we end with everybody up and dancing and having a great time. And it's obviously a really, really positive ending to the episode. I think it's a really great episode. It's very fun. Michelle was absolutely adorable. And Danny looked fabulous. Bob Saget definitely was the standout performance in this. It was incredible. I thought it was pretty great. Old Brown Eyes is a very well-executed episode of Fall House. I think they tackle an important topic of teenage embarrassment. I think every parent can do well to remember that they were once a teenager and were probably embarrassed as well. And obviously, if you're on the side with DJ, maybe just approach things more tactfully if you think you are going to be embarrassed by your parents. And of course, the third lesson is don't leave valuables around, particularly if there's a child who likes to play hot and cold. Great episode. Old Brown Eyes is pretty fantastic. <laughs>